cost of sector before we can start it, please turn off your cell phone or switch it to silent mode. Thank you. It's very cold nowadays, as it seems that fall is almost gone and winter is coming up sooner. Speaking of, speaking of which, the Christmas season is coming soon within the next few months. Today, we have a younger Santa Claus in Gangju who has come to speak with us, Jordan Ben Parkinsfeld from Canada. He's going to talk about a wonderful project for Christmas. The project's name is the 2014 Adopt a Child for Christmas, which has been happening in Gwangju for five years. The group gives hopes and dreams for many children on Christmas. Without any other thoughts, please welcome Jordan with applause. Yeah, it's uh, very good to be back here in, uh, at GIC doing, giving another talk. I'm very excited to be talking about this project especially because it is something that is very close to the hearts of many people living here in South Korea and in Gwangju particularly. Uh, one of the things a lot of people worry about in around this time is orphan children. They, the season where children without parents they really recognize and realize the lack of parents and guardians in their lives. And what we are seeking to do with this project is we want children to still feel loved, to still, to still have a connection with people who care about them, cherish them, and want to watch over them during this season. And what I would like to do now is introduce you first of all to the man who started this program five years ago. The man's name is <clears throat> Oh there we go. I hope it stays on there. Okay. So the man's name is Al Barnum. You may have seen him walking around sometimes in downtown area. He came here about <laughs> Alright, sorry. Um, he came here about eight years ago, I think, about six years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Al Barnum, he was a... He came here uh, about six years ago. He attended a missionary college back in the, the days where he was a... He, he was of the age. And he went to a college there where it was, the motto was, enter to learn, depart to serve. Now, Al takes this motto to heart and he lives it out wherever he goes in the world. Uh, he interacts with the community around him and he continues to do so in all the stages of his life. If you've ever had the opportunity to run into Al in Guangzhou, you will immediately recognize him by his huge heart, by the amount of compassion and caring he gives to all the people who want to talk to him. He is a very approachable person, he is a very considerate person, he's a very compassionate person about every single little thing in his life. He wants to, he wants people to be treated fairly, he wants people to be treated with love and respect, and you can tell by the way that he approaches each person in the community. He listens, he talks with them, he gives them the time of day, he is a person that carries a lot of weight in the community simply because he cares. Now, this you can see this just by his uh, experience if we go back a slide. Uh, he was deeply involved in a prison ministry during his college years. Uh, this means he went into prisons and the prisoners there, he basically would, yeah, he would minister to them, he would work with them, he would help re rehabilitate them and get them prepared to come out of prison back into the real world. And he would work hard with them just to see them succeed in their life beyond the prison doors. So after that, he moved to Honduras where he was a volunteer to build homes there. One of the things that you, we like to see in volunteers and a lot of people like to see in their lives and we like to see especially in compassionate people is that they get there and they get their hands dirty. They put their hands into the community and they build from the ground up. And basically, that, that's literally what he was doing there in Honduras. He was getting his hands dirty. He was building the community from the ground up, one house at a time. The next slide, we see that in 2008, uh, Al moves to South Korea. 
Now there's a man here, uh, he, unfortunately, he passed in February, but his name was Michael Simning. Al met Michael Simning uh, after finding a Sunbeam ad in a local publication here. And the volunteers at Sunbeam at the time were Michael Simning, uh, a man named Elton, there was James Green, Arlo Matisse, Daniel Lister, Tim Whitman, Zaid, Steve and Anita McNally, and a few others. There are so many that you can barely name them all. Uh, you might recognize James Green and Tim Whitman as the uh, owners of the First Alleyway Restaurant. Uh, Zaid was actually T-Man on uh, GFN. Uh, Arlo Matisse, he's currently the City of Light, uh, I guess, DJ. And Steve and Anita McNally, they were quite involved in the community here as well. So Al, he decides, you know what, I'm here, I need to get involved with the community. I need to help build this community from the ground up. As he did in Honduras, that's what he will do here in South Korea. And so he steps up to help Elton at Sungbi, which is the girls' orphanage. He helps organize two fundraisers a year. They end up being bake sales, and this is a tradition that has continued to the present day. Uh, as you go to the first alleyway restaurant, there's usually one in the springtime, there's usually one in the fall. And these bake sales, they, a lot of people in the community actually participate them in. One of them in particular, I know one person in the audience here, Nancy, she baked a delicious tiramisu, and that actually went for a good sum of money just because it's a dish that not a lot of people get to enjoy. And these bake sales were actually quite prolific. They got a lot of money coming in. Now, yeah, so we go to the next slide. Thank you very much. The Al, in 2009, so Al's been involved with Sunbeam for about a year now, maybe a little bit less. And he sees that these funds aren't, these funds, these, this money that comes in from the fundraisers isn't really being used for much. And what he does is he sits down with, the, with Elton and he sits down with Michael and he says, Hey, the funds that we've raised, they need to go to something, something that people can see. Something that people can go, hey, that money's not just sitting around doing nothing, it's being put to use. And so I'll suggest that the funds be used to fix rooms, to purchase blankets, to do things actually for the children. Tactile things that people can see and approve basically, hey, this is good. We are helping out. We're helping out in a tangible way. And so he also manages using the Using his influence in the community that he already was involved in, he, he actually kind of went up quickly in the standings there. A lot of people respected him, even after such a short time. He's very outspoken, that's another reason. He went around, made the right connections, he talked to the right people. And so he was able to convince the American military members to participate in Easter and Christmas events. So they would come down, they would uh, bring gifts, they would just get involved and help out with the orphans as well. And so Al and his co-worker Brent, at Christmas time of 2009, they purchased by themselves 50 hats and 50 pairs of gloves, one for each of the girls that were currently at Sungbi. This is the spark of Adopt a Child for Christmas. Now, I think it really needs to be mentioned that that's not a small purchase. For one person, uh, one person bought the hats, one person bought the gloves, it's a, it's a relatively large uh, donation to these girls and they did it willingly they didn't make fanfare about it they didn't they didn't call for attention they just did it out of the goodness of their hearts and yeah like i said that was the spark that set off this whole adopt a child for christmas initiative so in 2010 al joins facebook okay uh he's uh, he's a little bit older than the rest of us and so he wasn't particularly with the times he wasn't exactly sure of what networking could do. He didn't know what social media could do. And he watched the film called Social Network and he thought, you know what? This could really help bring attention to the orphans. This could really bring attention to the needs of the people all over this city. And so he decided to join Facebook. And uh, we're very glad he did. He asked Brian Burgoyne, who is Nancy's husband, uh, to set up a Facebook event in 2010 for the very first Adopt a Child for Christmas program. And he calls it the Adopt a Child program because he wants to call to attention the fact that many Koreans are leery of adoption because of a strong belief in bloodline. Uh, he was very, very touched that, and I think he was also a little bit, he was unnerved 
by the fact that so many orphans were left in orphanages and that people were not willing to adopt the orphans because there wasn't any blood connection with them. Uh, they're back, way back in the history, like, well, that's not even way back, 2010, not, not that far, not to that long, bit, not that long ago. And the bloodline thing is, was an issue back then, and people weren't as willing to raise another man's child because they wanted their child to carry on their bloodline, to carry on their legacy. Legacy is a big thing in this country, and uh, as, as it is in many different countries around the world. A man, men and women are very, they're a little bit leery of adoption simply because of the, they don't think they can love somebody who's not of their own blood, of their own biology. And it, it's a very difficult thing to raise another man's child. But you do it. And that's what Al wanted people to do. He wanted to say, hey, adoption is not, not something that we can attach a stigma to. It is something that is necessary. These children need parents as well. And so, if still in 2010, he used this Adopt a Child for Christmas program on Facebook, the event, if we can go to the next slide, uh, the goal for the Christmas time in 2010 was to get one gift for each girl. So totaling about 50 gifts. In the first 12 hours, I want to emphasize that, 12 hours, that's not even a full day, all 50 gifts are provided for the girls. As soon as the word went out on social media, boom, 12 hours later, 50 gifts, every girl got a present. And in just under a week, that's six days I think he told me in the interview, 100 gifts. So each of those girls got two gifts each, which is huge. Two and a half weeks later, 200 gifts. That's four gifts per, gr per girl in less than a month. Okay, that is incredible. Using social media, that's why social media was such a huge thing for Al. He saw the potential that it had and it just exploded in a way that even he didn't expect. He was caught off guard, he was flabbergasted that people would be so giving as soon as they caught word of this. <coughs> now the drop off points for this whole initiative, for this program, were Al's office and the underground grocers. The underground grocers has since been closed, but at that time there were just stacks of presents sitting in the, in the building there. It was amazing to see. So the next, the next year, in 2011, uh, Al, he ended up wanting, hey, I can't take care of everything myself, and neither should the people who are immediately involved with Sungbeam. What I want to see is for other people in the community as well to reach out and help with these programs. And so he reached out, and Nancy Harkar and Maria Lisak, they both responded to his requests, and they ran the fundraising bake sales in the year 2011. Uh, Al, he overhears concern that Sungbean is getting all the attention from the expat community. And so he clarifies, he releases kind of a statement saying that he wanted to create a model that was du duplicable. Um, you could duplicate it, as in Koreans could take it and adapt it for other orphanages. He wanted this one program for Sungbean to be something that could be adopted by Koreans for their own orphanages, for the things that they wanted to see these presents going for. Uh, it is a remarkable thing that this program even started. He did get a lot of support from the Korean community. He got a lot of support from the foreign community. And he wanted to see Koreans stepping up and saying, hey, if a foreigner is doing this in our country, why don't we try it for ourselves as well? And he wanted to move, he wanted to work the hearts of the people in Gwangju to do this as well for the children that are left in these orphanages. And so this second year is also a success, but due to a tragedy in the family, Dan or Al, he has to hand the program over to Daniel Lister in 2012. Now this tragedy was something that hit very, very close to home. It affected a, a, a daughter of his, and it's a tragedy that definitely floored him for a little bit. He was not expecting it, and it was something that he lost a lot of energy for the coming year, and it was... It, it, it affected him in a huge way, and that's why he needed to hand it over. He, he couldn't do it by himself anymore. He didn't have the energy for it anymore. 
he had to hand it over to somebody else. And luckily, he had a man named Daniel Lister who had worked with him for a couple years already. And he trusted Daniel Lister. And so he said, Daniel, I need you to take over this program. I need you to look after the orphans the same way that I have. And so Daniel Lister, he stepped up in 2012. And actually, these are some pictures from the 2011 uh, Christmas party. Uh, they had a, uh, I don't know, I think this is Steve McNally who dressed up as a Santa Claus. And he went to the Sungbean Orphanage and he distributed the gifts that were purchased. This is one of the orphans there. Uh, the next slide. Um, here's Al himself. He's a, uh, you, you, could, you could point him out anywhere. He's a uh, very recognizable. He uh, always has a smile on that face when he's with the orphans. It's incredibly touching and very inspiring to see the joy that helping children brings to him. Uh, there's Santa Claus again with one of the younger orphans there. Some of the gifts that were donated. And uh, here, more of the orf more, some of the youngest orphans at Sungbean. And they were all benefited by this program. And it was, seeing these pictures, it, it was a little bit touching to me. Even though I didn't actually, I wasn't there personally, it still touched me. It still moved me. And I did actually have a, actually if we go to yeah, in 2012, there was a video for the 2011 one, but unfortunately there wasn't an internet connection strong enough here for me to show the video. But the video, you can find it on YouTube if you type in Sunbeam Christmas. And uh, it's one of the volunteers, Stephen Redeker, he made a beautiful video of the 2011 uh, Christmas program. Now in 2012, uh, before we actually get to the Christmas time, uh, thanks to donation money, so money that were donated by private donors, by people in the community, by people you know, all across the city. Six Sunbeam girls and two female chaperones, they were sent to visit America. And, and it was an amazing experience for these girls and these chaperones to see what life in another country actually entails. They got to see the generosity of other countries. They already saw the generosity of foreigners in their own city. But now they got to see what life outside South Korea was like. And it was an experience that none of them have forgotten. You can still talk to them these days, and they will remember and they will relate to you the memories that they made while they were in North America, when they were in the USA. Now, Stephen Loge, also during this time, he was a representative for the Korea Mac PC guys. He does a lot of work with foreigners all across the country. Um, fixing their computers and uh, fixing their tablet devices, stuff like that. He donates computers, tower, tower computers, desktop computers, for the girls at Sungbeam to use. So now the girls have computers that will allow them to kind of see a little bit past the walls of the orphanage. And in the spring of this year, also, the bake sale is expanded by Daniel Lister. He decided to uh, expand it to include an art auction. And this is an effort that raises a considerable amount of extra money for the support of Sunbeam orphans. Now, if we go to the next slide, he graciously takes over the Adopt a Child for Christmas program. Now, I, I want to put a lot of emphasis on that word graciously. Uh, if something was dropped on you, something of this capacity, something, this, this is an important program. And not a, lot, not a lot of people would take that on themselves, but Daniel Lister, he was informed of the risks, he was informed of the time it would take to get involved. He was informed of every little detail that he, every little roadblock he might come into, uh, he might encounter. And still, he graciously took it over. He said, yeah, Al started this, I'm going to continue it, and it's a good thing he did. What he did then is he pulled in the aid of the Gwangju International Center, so this very uh, institution that we are speaking in today and that we are conversing in today. They offered themselves as a warehouse of sorts. So remember last year, Al used uh, his own office and he used the underground grocers. In 2012, Daniel was like, okay, how can we get the GIC, how can we get the Gwangju International Center involved in this? And so he approached the GIC and he said, well, how can you help out? And the GIC, they replied in a remarkable fashion. They said, yeah, we will be a drop-off center. We will be an advertising agency. We will advertise for you. The GIC, they also provided a lot of manpower to help collect, sort, and administrate the incoming gifts. So it's an incredible thing 
that the GIC was here to help with that sort of initiative. It, it was a massive program. In 2012, I think, a, I think 250 gifts were processed for children. And that's, thank goodness, that the GIC was here to help out with that. Uh, Daniel would have uh, burnt out. It would, have, it would have been a lot of extra effort for him. But the GIC was able to help out in a huge way. And it's lovely, absolutely lovely to see that this is what happened. So then, also in 2012, is the year when the program branches out to other orphanages. Uh, Daniel Lister, he heard kind of the cries out about how Sungbin was getting all the attention. And so Daniel Lister, he approached Al, he said, listen, these are the details, these are the things. We, 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 I would like to branch out, I would like to reach more orphans. And so Al, he gave his blessing to that. And so the program branched out to other orphanages for the first time, including M Dream and several group homes in the Guangzhou area. And Daniel, he attests that this was possible largely due to Al's hard work in the previous two years, as it means a vast amount of people in Guangzhou know and trust the program Adopt a Child for Christmas. And yeah, 250 gifts, people trust the program now. This is, this is not something to be overlooked. People trust the name of the program, People trust Al Barnum. Now, by, by, like, uh, by Vicarious Association, uh, people trust Daniel Lister because he is also affiliated with Al Barnum and the program that he founded. In the end, the ACC program provides gifts for between 200 and 250 orphans in 2012. Uh, 2013 comes around. That's an, yeah. Daniel Lister, due to a heavy workload for his MA, is unable to run the ACC program this year. So, Daniel and Al together, they approach myself and Al's Korean protege, Sunjin, Sunjin Choi. Uh, you can see her actually involved in a lot of different things in the community here as well. And so he approaches them, and he approaches both of us actually, and says, hey, can you take over the program? Can you help out? And we, we accept. And we decide that in 2013, instead of focusing on just one or two orphanages, we want to kind of bring the number of, down, number of gifts down to one gift per child, but go to as many children across the city as possible. So we want to expand the focus to all the orphans in all the orphanages across Guangzhou. Uh, we realize that we can't do it in one year. Uh, we were hopeful that we could try and do it in one year, but we knew that we probably couldn't do it in one year. So we wanted to, over the next couple of years after 2013, to build up to a gift for every child in all of Guangzhou, every orphan child, I should say. So, rather than one person also, like, it was Al in 2000, 2010, it was, uh, all, it was Al in 2011, it was Al in 2012, oh sorry, yeah, it was Al in 2010, it was Al in 2011, it was Daniel in 2012, and in 2013, that's when we decided, you know what, it can't be just a one person thing, it needs to be a team of people. And so, Sunjin and I, we reached out to the community and said, hey, can anybody help us with this initiative? Would anybody be willing to dip into their hearts and give us a hand volunteering for this? And we saw a group of people. Uh, it was about 20 people, it was incredible. Fundraisers were organized, donations were collected, and in the end of this entire thing, 450 orphans, including 80 from a private agreement between Wolong Church and M-Dream, they receive gifts for Christmas. That's 450 children, 450 orphans. It's incredible. It was moving to see just how people reached out to help the community. And it's amazing. It is an effort completely supported by people in the Guangzhou community. Some donations even came from the USA and other countries like New Zealand, uh, Norway. Uh, we branched out in a global way and it, people answered the call. And it's incredibly moving. So now, these are gifts from last year's. Uh, we filled up a room at the, uh, at this GIC, uh, look. yeah, at this, no, at the old, old GIC location. We filled up uh, one of the rooms there. Uh, actually, one of the volunteers here, Juno, he was very, very helpful in this. <laughs> um, he, he was able to keep an eye on the gifts. He was able to direct people to bring the gifts into the room. And this room completely filled up just completely filled up. Like, Dickies got involved, they, uh, they were able to reduce the price of some of their sweaters, 
to about 30,000 won, so these could go out to the children. Um, we would actually hand a list to Dickies and they would fill it for us. Uh, they did that with sweater vests, they did it with uh, padding jumpers, padding vests, just hoodies. Uh, we had a good number of volunteers, Neil Morrison, uh, actually if we go to the next pictures. Um, we had Justin Ramsey, we had Sunjin, we had uh, Kaylin, we had Kat Katrina, or Katarina I think her name is, one of the two. Um, Kat Katarina I think it is. <laughs> Katarina, there we go, thank you guys. Uh, they helped out, Neil Morrison was there, um, I was there, and Rob, Rob Smith was there to drive with his car. Uh, there were a lot of volunteers. I can't remember all the names of the people, so if I forget your name, I'm sorry. Please forgive me, there have been a lot of volunteers that have come through this program. Uh, then there was a Christmas party actually, he actually held, um, and this was at Sunbeam again. This is uh, Marcus Kotze, um, he's a South African living here, and uh, he ended up being the Santa Claus for this year. And uh, he distributed the gifts. This is absolutely adorable. Um, she really appreciated the gifts. And uh, it was very touching, again, to see that these children were receiving gifts from the community. People that didn't know them, people that had no personal connection with these orphans, but still dipped into their hearts to love and receive these children on Christmas as their own. And it's incredibly moving to see that. Uh, there's Al. He doesn't seem to age. He, he, he never gets older. Every picture I see of him, he always looks the same. Uh, I want to know the secret of his youth. Um, actually, I, I think part of the secret of his youth is helping out at the orphanage. Um, that much happiness and that much uh, fulfillment does wonders for a person's soul. And right here, how can, that's beautiful picture. She, she greatly appreciates the way that people have been uh, giving back to the uh, orphans there. It's, it's moving. Um, I'm, I'm kind of choking up a little bit here, but I, I, prom I, promise, I'll, uh, I promise I'll continue on. So in 2014, oh, actually no, we go, that's the whole group. There's a bunch of the orphans, you see Al, you see a lot of the people, there's Arlo sitting over there. Um, a lot of the volunteers that helped out with a lot, like scattered among with the orphans, it's a beautiful sight to see all those people. It's incredible. So the next slide. In 2014, that's this year, um, the program will open tomorrow, October 12th, and it will run until its deadline of Saturday, December 6th. Um, between those two dates, we will be collecting money by bank transfer. Uh, I'll get, into, I'll get into a little bit of details later while we're doing just bank transfer uh, because I think it's a little bit important. Our goal is to raise enough money to purchase gifts for all of Guangzhou's 800 orphan children. At 30,000 Korean won per gift, that's largely what we've been doing every year. At, at 30,000 Korean won per gift, that's a 24 million won objective. That's huge. Um, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit nervous myself undertaking a project like this because not hitting our goal is a very very de it's it's likely but we can't look at it that way we have to look at it that every gift every other gift we get every new gift that is sponsored that's a child that receives a gift and that's the way we need to look at it and so it seems huge but we are confident okay yeah, I'm nervous, I'm worried that we might not hit it, but we're also confident we can hit the goal with the Guangzhou and the global community behind us. Uh, Guangzhou has proven itself day in and day out to be very community-minded. Everybody is close-knit here in this city. People want to get involved in things. People want to support. More than anywhere else I've heard. Uh, we've had people actually two weeks ago, they came through for an event that we put on, and they were saying, wow, the community here in Guangzhou is so much different than in Seoul, than in Daegu, than in Daejeon. They marvel at the fact that everybody here gets along in such a close-knit way. They love the fact that people care for each other. A lot of people know each other. Like, I can go, and I can go into a restaurant and I can see 20 people that I know. It's incredible. The community, the community that has been built up 
around just generosity and compassion and love for each other. And we think and we know that the people in this community will back us up. We know that, hey, this is our goal, help us please, and we know that we will be backed up. We know people will support us because that is what Guangzhou is all about. People support other people here, and it's a beautiful thing to see. This year's program, it will be done completely through monetary donations, as the logistics of dividing our goal between physical gifts and bank transfers will prove a monumental task. In past years, people could go out and buy presents themselves and bring it to the GIC as a drop-off point. We cannot do that this year. Last year, there were a, a good number. I won't, okay, I won't say a good number. There were enough people that backed out last minute, not bringing in their gifts, to make us want to move only to the monetary donations. Um, if somebody promises to bring a gift in for a child and doesn't end up doing it, you have to fill that in last minute with your own money. Um, if the money, if the money transfer hasn't been made, you can just go, okay, we just use the money that we actually have. Um, it was a little bit stressful the very well fat last few weeks. Basically harping on people. I, I don't like to use the word harping, but basically being like, hey, you promised to bring a gift. Please bring the gift. You promised. Come on, bring the gift in. Um, and when you don't hear any reply and you, when you don't see the culmination of their promise, it makes you lose just that little amount of faith. Just that little amount of faith that people will follow through. Now, faith hasn't been lost because, you know, for every one person that did that, 150 actually follow through on their promise. But we still, with 800 gifts, we don't want to risk anything. We want, we want to have that money, we want to see that money, and we want to move that money to whatever means, <laughs> like whatever place we have to. And it's a lot easier to do when you can see everything in one place, rather than keeping tabs on a drop-off point and a, uh, and, and a bank account, basically. All right, so there, I am gonna give you a fair warning. In the next couple of months, there will be a, several fundraisers. Uh, among them, a chili cook-off. Uh, that's something we're working on. Uh, we're also just gonna be loose change jars at uh, foreign establishments. Things like tequilas, things like a place like the alleyway, German bar, places like that. We're going to leave a big jar where people can drop in just lose change donations. Now, what you are probably all thinking is, how can I get involved? What can I do to help this program? Now, last year, I was able to convince my third grade students. I, I work at Samyuk Elementary School, and uh, my third grade students, I, I teach about I taught about 70 of them last year, uh, all very, very uh, skilled in English, and so I explained the whole program to them. And they understood. They understood what we were going for. And I said, okay, I'll put this jar on my desk, and if you want to, you don't have to, if you want to, you can put some money into the jar. And I was expecting, you know what, maybe 100, 100,000 won, maybe 200,000 won, um, but no, 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 no. My students, they raised over 1.2 million won to buy presents for the uh, orphans. The, they came in these cute little envelopes, you know, with little teddy bears. They'd be like, from Cecilia for orphans. And they, they would hand me the envelope, and there would be a good amount of money in there. It was amazing to see the children even getting involved this way. And we would urge you, like the teachers in the room, we would urge you to do the same. Um, if you're at a corporation, if you're at a business, we would encourage you to do the same, to raise money for this initiative. It would be monumentally helpful for us. It would be incredibly, incredibly helpful for us if you would just help out just that little way. Now, if you can't give monetarily, just help us spread the word. Help us tell other people about the program. Share it with others. Ask for a poster and we can give you a poster about the program. Uh, we will do everything we can to spread the word through whatever means possible. And hopefully, by the way that people are involved here, we can spread the warmth of Christmas cheer to everyone who needs it most. Now, there are things already underway. So if we go to the next slide. This is a form that's actually going to go out tomorrow. And this form is going to be available on the internet. You'll be able to find it on the Guangzhou page and several other uh, 
several other pages. And basically, it is a form that you will fill out for how many children you want to sponsor. You'll have where you put in your name, you put in your email, you have how many children would you like to sponsor. Um, if you have a, uh, if you, if you want a certain gender to, uh, to sponsor, to buy gifts for, then you can clarify that in here. Uh, it'll ask for your bank information so you can, so we'll like, see which bank account money will be coming from. And then there's also an option to leave a personalized note for each of the uh, orphans. If you would like to write a personalized note for the orphan that will be receiving your gift, uh, you just put it into that box. It'll be 2001 extra for us to go out and buy the card and hand write your message in there for them. And uh, once it's submitted, you will see all the information. When uh, the form has been submitted, you'll see that you'll have to transfer the money and that it will go to my, I made a secondary account just for Adopt a Child for Christmas. Um, and it's gonna go into that account. And KEB, that's, that's my bank, and uh, you'll be able to find that information as well. And we and the orphans in the city, we are very grateful for your contributions, whatever they are. If you're just sharing this program, thank you so much. If you're actually giving monetarily, again, thank you from the very bottom of our hearts. Any way that people can contribute to this, is incredibly touching and we really appreciate your help in all of this. Uh, other projects that are underway, um, one of the volunteers that is working with us, uh, she started something on CrowdRise, which is a crowdfunding website. And uh, basically there are a bunch of foreigners who will be doing a, uh, a run in Tamyang uh, at the end of November and she's looking for people to sponsor the different runners who are involved. Our goal there is uh, 3 million won, 3,000 American dollars, and uh, we would like to, uh, hopefully we can reach that goal by the end of November at this website, www.crowdrise.com slash running for adopt a child for Christmas Guangzhou. Uh, that's very hard, difficult to remember, but uh, it's there. <laughs> um, and another thing that's underway, uh, the, there's electronics item collection for the Korea Mac PC guys. There is a, actually, very cute orphan, right? Um, that was drawn by Jen Lee, who is sitting in the back of the room here. And uh, she drew this poster last year. And what this is, is an auction for electronics and other items. Things like cakes, things like computers, uh, like video game consoles, and those things are sold. And any money raised through that program is then given to the adopt a child program. 100% of the proceeds goes to the children. Last year they sponsored something like 70 children through, the, uh, through these. It was great. And so you can find them on Facebook um, at the Korea Mac PC Guys auctions. Uh, and then what we need from the community. Um, I should say what we want, but uh, really what we need is shares on the social media. Um, let people know about what we're doing. And that's gonna really help us in a huge way. Uh, reliable Korean volunteers uh, to translate documents, articles, advertisements, etc. Um, I've contacted three of the largest newspapers in Korea. Um, I've got the Chosun Ilbo, I've got the Korean Times, and the Korea Herald. All uh, I'm t in talks with them to run stories on this program. Uh, we would also like some Korean media to pick it up as well. Because the further that word goes, the more support we are bound to get. Uh, we're looking for electronics for the Mac, Korean Mac PC guy, Korea Mac PC guys. Um, I've got a bag back there already with some stuff that that's being donated, and we're always looking for more stuff. And we're looking your, for your support. Uh, everybody who's helping to organize this whole event, uh, we do get discouraged at times. Uh, we do get uh, we we do feel down. We do feel low because certain goals aren't being met, and we could use your support as well. Uh, if you see some of the volunteers, give them, give them, hey, you're doing a good job. And uh, we, we appreciate that as well. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for coming to talk with me.